On paper, the iPhone XS Max from 2018 is an absolute steal on the used market, being around $300 USD and carrying specs that are still pretty darn capable. And so, is it just too good to be true? Well, to be honest, that really depends. And so, to find out whether this is the right device for you, let's examine each aspect of it from a 2023 perspective, starting off with the design. And by the way, timestamps are in the description if you'd like to see something specific. So in terms of design, the XS Max is still absolutely stunning, gorgeous, and premium. It's got stainless steel rails, a shiny glass back, and just an overall very minimalistic yet stylish appearance. It's available in silver, space grey, and gold, and the gold especially looks amazing. Now on the surface, it may look pretty similar to what we have nowadays. We still get that all-screen design with the notch and glass back, but upon closer inspection, quite a bit has changed. For example, this was the last iPhone to have the shiny glass back instead of the frosted glass we see today, the last iPhone not to have the square camera bump, and the last iPhone to have the iPhone text at the bottom. Plus, the XS Max also has the rounded edges, not the flat sides we see today, which is honestly an advantage. The flat sides are a tad unergonomic. But speaking of ergonomics, in terms of feel in the hand, the XS Max is pretty darn enormous. In fact, it was actually the first big iPhone with the all-screen design, like the iPhone 8 Plus is to the 8. It's got a screen size of 6.5 inches, a weight of 208 grams, and a thickness of 7.7 millimeters, so it can feel unwieldy at times, and one-handed use is a bit of an effort to say the least, although it's much, much thinner than flagship phones today, so I'll give it that. If big phones aren't your thing though, you can always step down to just the regular XS, which is basically the same spec-wise as the XS Max, but it has a 5.4-inch display instead, much more portable and one-handed friendly, and it also costs a bit less. Something else worth mentioning is that the XS Max has all the modern niceties that we're used to, like wireless charging on the back, stereo speakers which have very applaudable sound quality, and Face ID in the notch. All in all, the design has held up great, it still feels incredibly premium and well put together, not to mention being a pretty darn stunning phone too, most likely because it doesn't have that square camera bump. Now moving on to the display, if you're looking for areas to fault the XS Max in, this definitely isn't one of them. It's a 6.5 inch 60Hz OLED panel with a resolution of 2688 by 1242 along with a pixel density of 458 pixels per inch. This equates to a gorgeous panel, it's incredibly immersive due to its size, it's razor sharp, has great colours, and it's OLED, so you're getting those deep true blacks. Like literally the only thing it's missing is a high refresh rate. But this was 2018, and 120 or 140 44Hz panels weren't nearly as mainstream as they are now, so I guess that's fair enough, although it really is a shame because that would literally make it a perfect display, and even more insane value for money than it already is. Of course, if you're not a tech spec nerd, then it really isn't a big deal. You know, 120Hz isn't any kind of essential feature, unless you're coming from one, and in that case it might be a bit rough to adjust, but 99% of the time doesn't matter. You're already getting an absolutely fab display. Something else on here that's pretty fab for its price is the camera setup, which is still perfectly capable of taking some very impressive shots, even if the newest iPhones have progressed ahead significantly. On the rear, we get 12 megapixel main and telephoto lenses, and then on the front, a 7 megapixel selfie camera. Photos taken on the main lens are on average still really, really good. You're still capturing a ton of detail, getting great colours, just really consistently good images, whether you're photographically minded or just looking for something for the occasional shot. Portrait mode on here is also pretty good, it can struggle around the edges of the subject at times, but overall it's still solid, and works with pets and objects, as well as people, which is a good thing because generally pets are better than people. Plus, the telephoto lens on here allows you to zoom optically up to two times without eating into the quality, and while it's a lower quality sensor than the main lens, it's not by any means bad, although whenever you can I would still use the main lens. The telephoto lenses on the most recent iPhones are pretty much as good as the main lenses, but unfortunately not back when this phone was released. Oh, and indoor and low light shots do have a tendency to be grainy because compared to what we have now, the lenses just aren't that big. So for best results, you're going to want to mainly stay outside in the sun. Oh, and one last thing worth mentioning is that there's also no night mode on this phone. It missed out by one year, but it's a pretty significant feature that I'd struggle to live without because it lets you take really clear photos in dark scenarios without using the flash. I mean, it's not absolutely essential, but you know, it's pretty done useful to say the least. But all in all, 
overall, even if these cameras are lacking on some features, the actual quality is still absolutely valid, and it's not that hard to get some really impressive shots. Now, the selfie camera may only be 7 megapixels, but don't let that low number put you off, because it can still take really consistently good selfies, great colours, lots of detail, and it's proof that camera quality will triumph over megapixel count any day. Now, video can be recorded on here in up to 4K at 60 frames per second, and I'll let these samples speak for themselves, they're just so detailed, colour accurate and stable. And in aspects like these, you really just forget that this is a $300 phone. Now, it is lacking in terms of things like cinematic mode and Dolby Vision recording like the newest iPhones can do, but in the big picture, you know, those are pretty trivial for the average person. And for an almost 5 year old smartphone, the video recording is just incredible. Something else that's pretty incredible for a 5 year old phone is the performance, because the 10s Max will blow through absolutely anything and everything. It's got the Apple A12 chipset, along with 4GB of RAM, and Apple has become terrific at keeping their older devices running well these days, so whether all you plan to do is scroll social media and make calls, or play intensive games and run tons of things in the background, the chipset still holds its ground really well, you know, opening apps instantaneously, and hiccuping or lagging very rarely. Now, some people will say that their 10s or 10s Max is running slow nowadays or lagging a lot, but the likely causes of that are having tons of stuff build up and clogging the phone over time, or a degraded battery, so a factory reset and or a battery replacement should have your phone up and running again. But yeah, really, really impressive performance for a phone that's coming on 5 years old, and so if you're looking for a powerhouse on a budget, then this just might be it. Now by the looks of things on the longevity side, the 10s Max has a decent few years left of software updates, but it's not going to last well into the future. I mean, it's hard to say for sure, since Apple doesn't disclose when their iPhones will lose support, but nowadays, we're seeing around 6-7 to seven years of updates on iPhones, although probably even longer for the 10s Max, since it's got significantly more RAM than older iPhones which recently lost support, so probably expect the cutoff to be around 2025. And after the support is dropped, you can still use the phone as you always have, it's just that you won't be getting any new features, and apps will slowly stop being supported and stable as the years roll on. So yeah, the 10s Max isn't the best long term solution. You won't be able to use it for years and years like you can with a brand new phone, but it's still got a few good years left. And finally, let's quickly touch on the battery life, which is honestly not one of its strongest points, but not really a weak one either. The 10s Max sports a 3174mAh cell, which seems pretty big on paper, but most of these batteries are going to have degraded over years of use, and so most won't last nearly as long as they used to, so definitely try and find one with a battery health of over 90%, because anything lower, and you might have trouble getting through a full day. I mean, in general, with a healthy battery, light to moderate users will definitely get through the day with no issues, although if you do use your phone heavily, then you may want to consider something newer, or with a bigger battery. And so, with every aspect about the 10s Max now covered, let's talk about whether this is the right device for you. Well, it's clear that the phone's age has taken a toll on certain things, like the battery life, and how long it'll last into the future on software updates, but everything else definitely gets my absolute approval. The design is gorgeous, the display is sharp, the cameras are still quite capable, and the performance is blazing fast and will be for years down the line. So if the average battery life isn't an issue for you, and you don't plan to keep your phone for years and years, honestly, that is $350 well spent. Of course, make sure you're getting one that's in good condition and with a decent battery health, ideally over 90%, and you've got yourself a terrific bargain. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you drop me a like, and subscribe to Texpre for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Texpre, and I'll see you as always, next time.